I'd like to thank my colleagues for their support of House Resolution 38, which designates May 2019 as Lyme Disease and Tick-Borne Illness Awareness Month in the Commonwealth. We do resolutions, of course, to build education and awareness on an issue with the end goal of helping Pennsylvanians. This resolu resolution is no different. Chances are you know someone who has found a tick on them or a family member or who has been diagnosed or is extremely sick with Lyme disease. There are patients that are diagnosed immediately and treated and there are others who are missed in their diagnosis and suffer with more sev severe symptoms and health consequences. It's important to know that the medical and science community still have so much to learn on Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses, which is why each and every one of us must stay educated on the current information to protect our health. First, Pennsylvanians are at an extremely high risk of Lyme disease since we are the state that is ranked number one in reported Lyme cases, and we represent 40% of the overall nation's cases. If you aren't already familiar with Lyme disease, it's a bacterial infection that most people get from a tick bite. As with any disease, early diagnosis is key, so how do we help families? The first and most effective line of defense, of course, is prevention. Of course, to avoid tick-infested habitats is the best measure. Use personal protective measure, measures such as light clothing to be able to see ticks. Utilize repellent, repellents, and permethrin can be used on clothing. It has been noted that by spraying from your knees down can reduce your chance of contact with a tick by 70%. Check for ticks daily and shower soon after being outdoors. It's also critical to remove an attached tick immediately once it's found. A tick that is attached to your skin for less than 24 hours has a much lower chance of transmitting Lyme disease, even if the tick may be infected. Last year, I helped secure a $500,000 grant to the East Stroudsburg University Pennsylvania Tick Research Lab to allow for free tick testing to the residents of Pennsylvania. Residents may mail their tick to East Stroudsburg University and have it tested for Lyme and three other pathogens as well. The testing may also indicate how long the tick has been attached. This is helpful in preventative medicine and understanding the risks of Lyme and other illnesses if the tick tested positive. Since April 1st, when this program began, I now believe it's over 1,000 ticks, but the last official report I had was 517 ticks have been tested from 65 out of 67 counties, with 42% testing positive for a tick-borne disease. That'll show you the tremendous need that we have in Pennsylvania and our risk. For more information on this very valuable program for families, it can be found at ticklab.org. You should also be aware that some ticks are so small that the size of them can be as small as a poppy seed. You may not even know you have had one on you. These ticks can then fall off and an individual may develop symptoms. An unexpected summer fever or an odd rash may be the first sign. It has also been stated that only about 40% of people experience the bullseye rash, which is often associated with Lyme disease telling us that symptoms can be hard to identify. Only about 50% of people who have Lyme disease develop flu-like symptoms. So keeping the ticks at bay is critical and also includes utilizing prevention products on family pets, pets to avoid them bringing ticks into the home. There are also maybe measures in regard to landscaping that can help create tick safe zones, which can be researched. Working to keep deer from being close to your home, since they are the main food source of adult ticks, it is a measure that is often not discussed. Removing plants and other measures that attract deer should definitely be considered. So once again, I thank my colleagues for their support of House Resolution 38. I hope some of this information may have been helpful um, to our families and to the legislators to pass along. I definitely encourage you and your constituents to become educated on Lyme disease and tick-borne illnesses, prevention methods, and symptoms to best protect their health.